um, the YouTube stream uh, takes a few minutes. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I want at first to welcome all the speakers and participants that joined us today for this webinar. It is really necessary to kindly remind you to stick to the allocated time, which is from seven to 10 minutes for each speaker. So today the main title of our webinar or event is Press in Bahrain, Restricting the Word and Blocking Freedom. So let it be an opportunity to assess the state of press freedom in general throughout the world, especially in Bahrain, and to discuss possible solutions for addressing the challenges that face the freedom of press. In fact, we are saddened that at a time while the world yesterday celebrated World Press Freedom Day, the government of Bahrain is still showing indifference to the regional and international reports that rank Bahrain in the low ranks in terms of the index of uh, media and freedom of internet. And with the outbreak of the coronavirus, the free press climate continues to worsen. We all know that challenges existed already, but COVID-19 reinforced those challenges as it was an excuse for the governments and authorities that have abused power to undermine democracy. So the health security was considered a matter of national security, so countries quickly promulgated new laws criminalizing false news, red lines were established for information publication, and the list of banned topics for online discussion continues to drop. And here I must highlight the importance of the correlation between the freedom of press and the public's right of access to knowledge and information. The freedom of press is not solely the freedom of journalists to report and comment. And with the outbreak of the pandemic, governments have taken advantage of that to adopt restrictive measures, the most salient of which was restricting the right to access information, consequently affecting transparency. So that being said, I would like now to introduce our first speaker. She is a Bahraini human rights defender and journalist. She has been advocating for women's right, women rights sorry, and freedom of expression for the past 10 years through articles and collaboration with different regional and international media outlets. She's also the recipient of the John Philip Palm Award for Freedom of Speech and Press 2014. Naziha Saeed, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me today and for giving me this opportunity to talk. First of all, uh, happy World Fr Press Freedom Day uh, to all journalists all around the world, especially the ones behind the bars in Bahrain and everywhere else. Uh, we are celebrating this day. The freedom of press is in lowest points in many countries and especially in many MENA uh, countries and Bahrain was not exception in that. I would like at the beginning to emphasize on the fact that the press is an important pillar in the democratic system. And without press freedom, the whole democracy is doubtable. You can't have a democratic system without having an independent free media. Criticize, highlight violations and achievements and create public opinion. Freedom of press exists to support the democratic system and not to, to, to destroy it or to, uh, to it, it basically there to uh, make sure that the system is going well. Bahrain ranked at 168th out of 180 countries in Reporters Sans Frontières 2021 WordPress Freedom Index, which went out just recently. And that sums it all, sums the whole situation of freedom of press in the country. There is no independent journalists 
no independent media on the ground, they are all banned from working or from actually existing. Um, in 2016, the last independent newspaper was shut down, Al Wasat, and since then, the monopoly of the rest of the newspapers, TV channels, and radios are all to the government. All the messages that come through these channels are monitored, and they are all the same. We feel like every day when we are when we are reading the newspapers or watching the uh, TV channels that they are all coming from the same source. They are all having the same opinion. I'm just going to give a quick example for something happened in the last few days. There were um, an area in Bahrain where they are calling to uh, reopen their health center because it was closed a few years ago and that caused trouble to the people that lives in that area because they don't have an emergency room to go to if there is an emergency. And there were many, many demands in many ways online, and they are protesting in front of the health, health center, calling for, for it to be open, and we can see it only on social media. The media was totally ignoring th this, uh, this incident and this happening. And then the government decided to reopen that health center. And we can see that the media is full of thank, uh, thanking the government and appreciating this step and taking this step, like the government, the, the government move came just out of nowhere. So you can see how much the press covering only the side of the government, whatever the government say, whatever the government do, not what the people are saying or what the people are calling for. And calling to reopen an, a health center is just is just a health service. It was not political demand. It was not a, a, a demand for freedoms or for um, reforms. Can you imagine what happened to those? They are either behind bars or exist on social media or in international media. They don't exist in the uh, local media. While we are talking today or here now, there is 11 Bahraini photographers and journalists who are sentenced and serving their verdicts um, for taking photos, for writing their opinion, or writing an opinion that doesn't go with the authorities' opinion. Like Ahmed Hamidan, Sayyid Ahmed Al Musawi, and Mahmoud Al Jaziri, and more. From this platform, I would like to demand their freedom to continue doing their job that support revealing the truth and highlighting different opinions. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Naziha, for your uh, valuable contribution. Thank you. you. You shed light on a very important topic, which is uh, that the media is uh, and should be there for helping people and not to praise the government when the government does steps that are among the basic rights of people. Uh, thank you. And I would like now to turn my attention to the next speaker. She is a campaigner on Gulf countries at Amnesty International and is currently based in Beirut. She joined MENA program at Amnesty International in 1998 and started working on Bahrain in 2020. Sima Watling, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Hi, all. Um, well, I think my, my presentation will be a bit uh, drier than that of, uh, of uh, Said Naziha, sorry. So uh, basically, uh, nearly 10 years ago, in the face of mounting criticism, the Bahrain Independent Commission of Inquiry was appointed by royal order charged with investigating and reporting on human rights violations committed in connection to the 2020, uh, 2011 uh, protests. Chapter 10 of the BK report looked into allegations of media harassment. It established that out of the seven daily newspapers in Bahrain, only the daily Al-Wasat was independent in the country. 
and all radio and television broadcasts, as well as the Bahrain News Agency, were all state controlled. By November 2011, the King accepted the findings of the report and publicly the government's commitment to implement all its recommendations. One of the key recommendations was that Bahrain government uh, considered relaxing censorship and allowed the opposition greater access to television broadcast, radio broadcast, and print media. What happened since the BK report? In 2014, Bahrain introduced the cybercrime law, which further muzzled freedom of expression. The law did not in itself criminalize on, uh, online freedom of thought, opinion, and expression, but it allowed the prosecution of free expression as it complements media regulation law. Freedom of press is suggested, subjected to these restrictions as well. Article 70 of the media regulation law penalizes content that is considered as fake news. Blanket prohibitions on the dissemination of information based on vague and ambi ambi ambiguous um, concepts such as false news or spreading mis misinformation are incompatible with international human rights laws and standards since they, fall, uh, they fail this test. Bahrain's government uh, targeting and its clampdown on digital freedoms has not only been directed at human rights defenders and journalists. In fact, society at large is now under extreme scrutiny for their activities, interactions, and communications over the internet. In June 2017, the authorities ordered the closure of the daily newspaper Al Wasat. This left all remaining media either under direct state control or owned by figures aligned with the government. It also meant that all journalistic and editorial voices that had called for peaceful change in the kingdom was, was silenced. In 2019, the climate uh, of state intimidation aiming to quash freedom of expression escalated with heightened state rhetoric threatening to arrest and prosecute those who criticize the government, especially through social media. In a speech delivered on 20th May that year, during Ramadan festivities, the king stated that he had directed security agencies to put a decisive stop to the misuse of social media. The government's campaign of intimidation earned it an unusual rebuke from Twitter, which commented, commented on its public account, we agree with civil society that recent government statements in Bahrain about critical line posts will, if implemented, pose a significant risk to free, free expression and journalism. In 2020, Bahrain was among the Gulf countries to have used COVID-19 pandemic as a pretext to continue pre-existing patterns of suppressing the right to freedom of expression. The Cybercrime Directorate announced that it was working round the clock to monitor and track offending social media accounts and had referred a number of social media users to prosecution uh, for disturbing public security while invoking Article 168 of the Penal Code as a legal basis for its actions, referring to one of multiple provisions, the Bahraini law, that criminalizes uh, publications of false news or other information the government deems untrue. This weak attempt at a pandemic-related justification by the authorities highlighted the fact that the policy, like the, new, like the laws to enforce it, were part of a much longer-term pattern of repression. On 11 March this year, The European Parliament overwhelmingly adopted a, uh, an urgent resolution which included calls on Bahrain to stop violating freedom of expression and digital freedom. Bahrain's hostile response that this resolution is unacceptable interference in the internal affairs of the kingdom only continues to show Bahrain's intolerance attitude to criticism. However, in, this, in April this year, the Bahraini government referred amendments to the press, printing and publish, uh, publishing law to parliament. The proposed amendments include the scrapping of the provision of the law relating to jailing journalists and adding a major section on digital media, regulating websites and the accounts of media institutions. This may look good in theory, 
but the, the proof will be in the pudding. The right to freedom of expression enshrined in Article 19 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Bahrain has acceded to the, gov to the government. Freedom of the press is an, is, is an essential right and a core principle of democracy. Without free exchange of information, People cannot be fully aware of what is going around them and cannot meaningfully participate in communities or democracies. In the current geopolitical context, with Bahrain being so clearly under the influence of Saudi Arabia and so worried about the influence of Iran, has, has or may have on a large proportion of its, uh, of its uh, population, it is difficult to see when the Bahraini authorities will not feel threatened by free speech, free speech and the free press. Bahrain's allies have generally refrained from publicly criticizing Bahrain's human rights violation, reflecting their prioritization of defense and security considerations over human rights. As long as these allies turn a blind eye on human rights violations, as long as they continue to applaud Bahrain's projected polished image, as long as they will appear to choose to believe what the state-controlled media feeds them and not take of truth full stand for human rights, freedom of expression will continue to be curtailed and the repressive climate that pervades the country will only be exacerbated. Bahrain must rescind the decision to close al wasat and allow independent reporting. It must ensure that journalists are able to work without harassment or arbitrary interference in accordance with the rights to freedom of expression. And it must release all prisoners of conscience that is, those detained solely for peacefully expressing their views. Only then will Bahrain, Bahrain's proclaimed efforts at bettering human rights in the country begin to be credible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sima. A lot of uh, what you have told us shows that only few of the reforms recommended by the BICI were implemented in Bahrain. And it is very clear here that the attacks on the media sector arise from an unfair legal framework as Bahrain suffers due to laws and legislations that do not take into consideration the basic rights stipulated in international laws. Uh, for example, the law on organizing the press, printing and publishing includes many loopholes that allow the government to practice harassment on uh, journalists. And uh, I now uh, start, I maybe now start to move my attention to uh, our next speaker. Mr. Drury Dyke, he is the International Relations Officer for the mainly Bahrain-focused Salam for Democracy and Human Rights, where he leads on partnerships and relations with intergovernmental bodies like the EU and UN, as well as organizational policy. He is a former researcher at Amnesty International. Uh, please go ahead. Thanks, Kay. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me um, uh, take part today. I, I wanted to touch on a few things that both Seema and Naziha touched on. I'm not going to touch on them now, now that they've addressed them. Really important points. Um, I was going to touch on the European Parliament uh, resolution on RSF's um, um, sort of assessment. But I'll, I will I will kind of refer to a few other things that that have come up, and I want to turn this on its head. I want to be I want to try and be optimistic and look at the promise of press freedom. I want to to, to look at the what the opportunities are and what are the um, anterior sort of requirements. What do you need to have in order to get to that position? And there is an unfulfilled promise of press freedom in Bahrain for all the reasons that Naziha and and Sima have have referred to. And, and I guess what I'm talking about here is the, the, pr the promise includes a, a situation where the socio-legal environment is one which is open, which is transparent, where differing voices can be, can be voiced and have support. And in this respect, Seema, for example, mentioned 
um, calling on the, on the authorities to re release unconditionally prisoners of conscience. So that is really, that's that's uh, that's crucial. Does that mean that in a, in in such a context that the press is going to be something that the government agrees with all the time? No, of course not. Are there going to be mistakes? Yes, of course there will be. But the the a priori requirement is a respect for others. And I guess I just want to look at the opportunities of what uh, what's out there now. Now, Naziha and, and Sima both referred to, uh, mainly Sima, I think, with, with penal code provisions that refer to, you know, spread of false news, and defamation, and, and how the penal code in particular have, have, have been used uh, to restrict freedom of expression. Uh, Iwa, you talked about how the, the media law itself has been used to, to do the same. And, and this is all well known. In fact, I think you probably all know this better than I do. And, and Seema referred to how, you know, the recommendations made by Bicky and, you know, we've acknowledged that how the, those are unfulfilled. Those are also unfulfilled promises. But it remains the case, again, as, as Seema said, um, Akiwa Nazi has said that you know that Al Arab TV was banned at the at its launch in 2015. That Al Wasat was banned for good in 2017 after previous short term suspensions. One thing that neither Sima Nazi has so far have mentioned, maybe others will, is the NSO groups, uh, Pegasus uh, software, the malware that it's using in order to undermine freedom of expression and, and as a result the, the the press freedom itself how the nso group and its and its owners there the novalpina um and indeed in recent days um uh, amnesty international human rights watch and others have have called upon uh the organization its, its owners novalpina to to come clear but this is an opportunity this is a kind of area where the government itself could use the opportunity to come clean and say, look, we've, we've used Pegasus. We have applied it. Have we made mistakes? Maybe we have. Maybe in applying it to, uh, uh, to, to some, some activists in, in Bahrain was a mistake. But it is one example of where there could be a turning point. Now, Naziha mentioned the, the, the RSF. Uh, rankings, which which aren't great. I'll mention Freedom House, the U.S.-based um, um, kind of human rights uh, freedom organization, and it's it's not it's not any better, right? So on, on its index, Bahrain's freedom is ranked at, as eleven out of one hundred. So it's not great. Political rights, one out of forty, and civil civil and political rights, ten out of sixty. Now, these aren't they they speak to exactly the same narrative that that Naziha and Sima were were speaking about but i don't know if the if if uh, if my colleagues here caught the uh, yesterday's bahrain press associations um annual report published in in london um Adam Marzouk's, uh, uh, sort of enterprise and, and i don't know the details but they talked about 111 media infringements um the excessive use of now something that we haven't touched on yet the the use of the um uh the cyber crimes uh, directorate of the ministry of interior how it's used to restrict uh freedom freedom of expression and press freedom the the bahrain press association talked about 25 arrests 12 summonses for interrogation 23 instances of threats and blocking of websites and layoffs and so on now Okay, so RSF has said that the Khalifas have you have ruled with an iron fist and have used sort of quite, um, you know, quite strident language about uh, about the situation, and indeed we we often do. But I guess you know on this day, respect to, you know in respect to 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 the promise of press freedom, does it have to be that way? And and I and I do kind of wonder if it does. That we we have an opportunity to to there is an opportunity now to make changes there is a there is a there is there's an there's a chance now to make changes in the justice system and and to create a situation where those who are speaking out know that they're in that when they speak out they've got support in parliament so what are what are the a priori what are the prerequisites to to creating press freedom how do you fulfill that promise well the new the, the crown prince, the, the the relatively recently appointed prime minister, can can 
theoretically start to make those changes. They can engage. We've talked about, um, Seema's referred to the reforms that are being embarked upon by about the, the, media, uh, the media law. Consult us, speak with us, engage with us. I mean, we will speak out, for sure we will. But they can take the step to say, okay, Amnesty International, Naziha, you're a journalist. What did you think of it? You others who've been engaged with this at a Bahrain Center for Human Rights, what do you think of this? What do you want to see out of this press freedom, uh, out, of the, out of the media um, uh, reforms? So it's, 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 it's building the infrastructure in which press freedom can be built by respecting others, listening to others, and, and ensuring those others have a voice. So I guess that's that's really the one thing that I, I would like to see. And I, I guess the thing that struck struck me, maybe it's maybe a bit of a silly observation, but if if uh, if uh, if the the pedigree of the crown prince, the prime minister, is one in which 2014 he met with Sheikh Ali Salman uh, prior to his imprisonment, isn't that something that we can aspire to, that we can go back to, that we can think about, that he can engage again with Sheikh Ali Salman? What would it take in order to do that? Well, his liberty, listening to the UN. Is it listening to the UN an a priori requirement of, uh, of, 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 of the building blocks of, of building a, a context in which press freedom is, can, can be built? So I would say if the crown prince, the prime minister can do that, that would be something. But as I work towards the end, um, I just want to reflect on a few other things that aren't actually immediately obvious for press freedom, and that's academic freedom. Academic freedom is the, is the situation in which researchers undertaking PhD, their PhD studies in, for example, Britain, can pursue their studies without then being told oh, no, no, you've got to change your thesis, otherwise you're going to lose your job when you get back to Bahrain. This is imperative. Academic freedom under, is, is underscores, it's one of those building block features in, in, in press freedom. And it's about opening up the, the, uh, the ownership structure of, uh, of the media environment. Now, we've, we've uh, Nazihan, I think Seima and Riwa, uh, you've talked about um, how Al-Wasat was closed open it it can be done today it, the restrictions on 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 al wasat can be done today restrictions on on ownership can be amended as a matter of a regulation if they can close it so easily then it can be opened easily again i'll just come back in in, in closing to the opportunity that in, uh, opportunity that's presented by the appointment uh, by the of uh, the crown prince to, 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 the, to the role of prime minister, and it's look, it's there is a there is an opportunity to to make changes. Um, the the there is a mood, there is a change uh, globally. The election of uh, President Biden being being won, in which uh, that changes are possible. I think it's now time for us for the Bahrain Center, for Amnesty, for all of us to start thinking the impossible, to think about opening up this environment and to, to, to renew our positivism as COVID, hopefully, at least in the UK, is coming to, appears to be coming to an end for the minute as we're opening up. Okay, maybe it won't stay that way forever. But uh, I just want to use this opportunity now in a very somber and sober atmosphere that Naziha and Sima, Biwa, that you all set out, indeed the others are probably going to set out too, to try and try and galvanize and encourage us to to kind of push a little bit more. So with that, um, thanks everyone, and um, and and good luck to the rest of the speakers. Thank you so much for your contribution. Uh, I uh, really want to highlight a very important topics you mentioned. Uh, the first is the malware. Uh, it is it is necessary to raise awareness on digital rights and digital security for, for individuals so that they can continue their work safely without worrying about being targeted. And you also mentioned the freedom of education. I'd like to relate that to the 
government. It is important to urge countries to adopt digital education to counter false news and not to adopt repressive and punitive laws. Thank you so much. I now call upon our next speaker, Salwa Ghazwani from Article 19. She joined Article 19 in 2020 and has led the organization's programs in Tunisia ever since and gradually in other countries of the MENA region. Salwa has 15 years of experience working in non-governmental and multilateral organizations, including the UNDP, and the Center of Arab Women for Training and Research. Salwa, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Ridwan. Um, thanks to the Bahrain Center for Human Rights for organizing this webinar uh, to celebrate the World Press Freedom Day um, 2021 and to give us uh, the opportunity to exchange about the situation of press freedom uh, throughout the world and specifically in Bahrain. Um, as already um, has been mentioned by uh, the previous speakers, um, it is like press freedom um, remains a mere aspiration in uh, for independent media and journalists in, in Bahrain, like in many other uh, countries in the MENA region and also um, throughout uh, the, wor the world. Um, and um, I think the trend of silencing um, journalists and media um, professionals has been uh, constant um, and even has increased uh, in the past few years. Um, maybe the, the pivotal role of journalists and media workers, uh, particularly after the Arab uh, uprisings, uh, has, ma has made them uh, vulner vulnerable and a target uh, to, mu to multiple types of uh, of violations by uh, state and non-state actors. Um, so, uh, in addition to what uh, has been already said, sa uh, already said by previous speakers uh, about um, how media outlets in Bahrain are uh, strongly government and are owned by uh, figures associated with the government. Um, so, I would uh, like to add to that that. Um, uh, Media also is not uh, regulated in Bahrain uh, in line with international standards. As uh, in line with international standards, audiovisual media should be regulated by uh, um, a broadcasting regulatory body and dependent of the government uh, to be able to oversee the audiovisual sector, uh, give licensing to private TV uh, channels and radio stations, etc. Print media and online media don't need. Uh, to pass through a licensing system like uh, audiovisual media. Uh, this is not the case in Bahrain and also in many other uh, countries in the MENA region. Uh, the media is um, regulated um, by, uh, um, by the government, uh, not by uh, bodies independent of the government. Um, and uh, also uh, the, the media regulation in Bahrain um, does not distinguish between different types of media. Uh, so the Ministry of Information Affairs regulates the media and the, there is an overlap in staff members between the Ministry uh, of uh, Information Affairs and also the Ministry of Interior, um, of Interior and the National uh, Security uh, Agency. Um, and all these institutions are um, monitoring uh, closely um, media content. Also, um, the press law uh, uh, restricts uh, all foreign correspondents from working without uh, an annually renewed uh, license is, uh, issued by the Ministry of Information Affairs, uh, which can be refused for those reporting critically on government policy. Um, and this is uh, clearly against international freedom of expression standards to require uh, licenses for journalists uh, as such system often lead to political interference in the media. And uh, I think um, Naziha has already experienced uh, this uh, in, in the past few uh, years and many other um, correspondents of international media have also experienced the same. Um, um, so the, the, the Ministry of uh, Information Affairs and the, Min the Ministry of Interior actively monitor and censor the media with close supervision uh, of print, online and uh, broadcast sectors. 
um, if they disagree with a, a new report, journalists and editors are uh, contacted to either remove the, the articles, the content, or change it. Uh, restricting the freedom of a journalist to practice investigative journalism uh, or to challenge government policies and practices. Um, this also um, might uh, lead to um, a journalist self-censor, avoiding a funding of the government um, because they are aware that critical uh, reports will, will be censored uh, or will be uh, removed in addition to uh, possible uh, legal uh, um, Repersecution, repersecution and persecutions. Um, uh, in addition to that, the press law also has not been uh, brought into compliance with international human rights obligations, um, despite the promises by uh, um, the Bahraini government. Uh, uh, for example, during its uh, last uh, UPR, uh, they promised that they will uh, propose a new media law, and this is um, already um, has been developed, but this uh, has never been uh, published and never been uh, has never been consulted um, or um, put it to uh, be consulted by uh, civil society and journalists and media actors. Um, so, um, as already uh, Jerry has mentioned, it, so uh, the uh, Bahraini Press Association has documented more than 100 uh, infringements of media uh, freedom uh, during the last year, um, and the, uh, the 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 existing laws uh, that are that are applied uh, to persecute journalists uh, um, are not in, uh, in in line with international standards. Uh, they are. Um, there are many range of expression which are uh, criminalized, uh, including uh, criticism to, of the regime, of Islam, of other Arab uh, and Muslim countries. Um, uh, there is no justification and under Article 19 uh, of the uh, ICCPR, uh, the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights, uh, for a separate regime uh, of criminal liability for the media. Um, so this is also... Um, so I. I would like to be optimistic, like um, Jerry, and say th there is opportunities uh, for Bahrain um, to move forward with um, reforms uh, like that. Uh, what has been uh, done in early uh, 2000 um, and open for reform, um, but many indicators are not um, are not showing uh, any uh, like. Um, political willingness uh, to move forward um, in terms of guaranteeing freedom of the press, uh, academic freedom and freedom of association and freedom of uh, peaceful assembly, as all these freedoms are uh, mutually reinforced. Um, so I would like also to be optimistic uh, for Bahrain and many other uh, MENA countries to um, stop fearing from uh, journalists and media roles um, and um, see them as, and as he uh, has already mentioned, as a, a pillar for uh, democratization uh, and to support uh, changes in the in the in the region. Um, but unfortunately, and I cannot like trust um, governments uh, in our region, including uh, Bahrain and other and other uh, countries. There are opportunities. Uh, just. Stop fearing from um, uh, from activists, uh, human rights activists, and independent journalists, and um, just listen to them. I agree, but I cannot be optimist. Thank you very much. Thank you, Salwa, for your presentation. Uh, uh, actually, I want to uh, highlight uh, the most important. Uh, topic you mentioned, which is that the government does not uh, consider journalists as a, uh, a source of uh, information. They consider they consider them as a source of threat, especially after the outbreak of the pandemic, because uh, they are threatening the source of information. Oh, oh, I'm sorry for the microphone. One minute, please. 
Yes, so journalists are now seen as a source of a threat for the government because they are speaking the truth and they are uh, highlighting the uh, uh, cases that are really taking place. But I want to uh, mention just one minute, please. Okay. I'm sorry, I lost my note. <laughs> so let's just uh, hope that the freedom of press do not uh, stay a mere aspiration, as you uh, said, Salwa. I uh, would like now to call upon our next speaker. Uh, Fatma Luati. She's a journalist and an expert in media monitoring in the MENA region. Since 2010, she worked with a number of Tunisian and French radio stations. Uh, she joined the MENA Media Monitoring Group in 2011, and she supervised many projects on different topics, such as the monitoring of the media coverage on election period and the monitoring of the image of women in Tunisian and Algerian media in 2012 and 2015. Please, Fatma, go ahead. We can't hear you, Fatma. Still can't hear you, Fatma. Maybe it's because of the headphones. Fatma, maybe you can leave the room and try to join again. It happens sometimes. We can move to Hussein and then we can uh, go back to Fatma, maybe, Roa? It's okay. So our next speaker will be Hussein Al Sharif. He is a journalist and project coordinator at Maharat Foundation. He is a university professor and a Dutch World Academy certified trainer in media and video journalism. His work at Maharat includes research, resource production, media monitoring and content analysis, training workshops for journalists and other related topics to social media strategies. Please, Hussein, the stage is yours. Shukran, Ghiwa. Akid, and thank you very much to the Bahrain Bahrain for the human rights. Akid. Of course, if we want to talk about the freedom of the media in Bahrain, Akid, we can't change Bahrain from the Arab region that we are in. I want to talk about the freedom of the media in a bigger way for the freedom of the media in the Arab region, and then we can change the topic of the Bahrain. I mean, if we want to فتنا بالموضوع نحن بمنطقة تشهد تضييق على حرية الرأي والتعبير وحرية الصحافة يوما بعد يوم يعني إذا أجينا لمؤشر حرية الصحافة يلي أطلقته مراسلون بلا حدود للعام 2021 أكد المؤشر أنه بلدان مثل لبنان يلي هي كانت تعتبر من البلدان الأكثر اهتماما بموضوع أو الانفتاحا بموضوع حرية الصحافة نحن بالمركز 107 عالميا ويشهد تراجعا بسبب التضييق على الحريات بسبب اعتقال الناشطين رفع قضايا القدح والدم بحق الناشطين وبالتالي هناك تراجع كبير في لبنان بهذا الإطار إذا أجينا على الأردن بنفس المؤشر الأردن يقع بالمرتبة 129 عالميا هناك تفعيل لقانون الجرائم الإلكترونية اللي عم عم يضيق على الصحفيين عم نشهد مجموعة من الاعتقالات للصحفيين إضافة إلى قرارات من النيابات العامة بمنع النشر عن قضايا يحق للصحافي وبالتالي المواطن لأنها تخدم المصلحة العامة من مناقشتها 
إذا أجينا على بلد مثل العراق أصبح بالمرتبة 163 عالميا بمؤشر حرية الصحافة وبالتالي شهدنا بالسنوات الأخيرة كمية من الاعتقالات للصحفيين بالعراق واختيالات للناشطين وأيضا صحفيين من قبل الأطراف المتنازعة على الأرض وبالتالي يعتبر الصحافي هو الحلقة الأضعف بهذا الإطار ناهيك عن الحديث عن سوريا وعن اليمن وعن ليبيا وهناك صراع يتم خلال السنوات الماضية يعتبر الصحافي فيه الحلقة الأضعف ويتم تعدي عليه من خلال الخطف أو الاعتقال أو القتل أو حتى إصدار أحكام بحق الصحفيين مثل حالة صحفيين الجزيرة يلي تم إصدار أحكام أعدام بحقهم في صنعاء وبالتالي البحرين وهنا نأتي لدور البحرين التي تقع بالمرتبة مثل ما قالوا زملائي 168 عالميا بمؤشر حرية الصحافة يلي هي ما بتتجزع عن اللي عم بيصير بالمنطقة طبعا بالبحرين منذ العام 2011 منذ الحراك عام 2011 هناك كمية من التضييقات والقمع بحق الصحفيين مثل ما قالوا زملائي لحد الآن في أكثر من 11 صحافي ومصور معتقلين إضافة إلى ذلك تم بال2011 رصد موضوع قمع حرية الصحافة من خلال لجنة بسيوني التي أشارت إلى قمع حرية الصحافة ولكن بال2015 شهدنا تراجع واعتقالات أخرى بحق الناشطين واعتقالات أيضا بحق مغردين يعبرون عن أرائهم على مواقع التواصل الاجتماعي وانتهينا بالعام 2016 ب 2017 باغلاق جريده الوسط البحرينيه التي تعتبر الجريده المستقله بين المؤسسات الاعلاميه التابعه للحكومه او التابعه لجهات قريبه من الحكومات او حكومه البحرين. وبالتالي المشهد البحريني كمان بحريه الصحافه لا يمكن ان يجزع عن مشهد حقوق الانسان في البحرين. يعني إذا إذا عم نحكي عن حرية الصحافة لابد كذلك أن نذكر الانتهاكات في البحرين لحقوق الإنسان من خلال تعذيب السجناء وتعذيب المعتقلين أكثر وجود أكثر من 4000 معتقل سياسي ومعتقل رأي في البحرين إضافة إلى ذلك هناك قرارات تعسفية بسحب الجنسية من 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 صحفيين ومن ناشطين كذلك موضوع آخر وهو موضوع مهم الاختفاء القصري للسجناء موضوع التعليم بالسجون وأخيرا تم موضوع أساسي هو موضوع طبعا وموضوع الإعدامات اللي عم تتم بشكل تعسفي ويعرض السجناء سواء كانوا صحفيين أو كانوا مواطنين على محاكم عسكرية وهو مخالف للقانون الدولي المدني يجب أن يعرض على محاكم مدنية وليست عسكرية وبالتالي المشهد العام في البحرين هو مشهد للأسف هو سوداوي بالنسبة لحرية الصحافة وحقوق الإنسان وبالتالي نحن كمؤسسات تشتغل على حرية الصحافة وحرية الرأي والتعبير دائما نطالب بعدة قضايا أساسية سواء في البحرين أو في العالم العربي يجب احترامها من قبل الحكومات وعلى الجهات الدولية العمل على تعزيزها أحدها وهو بشكل أبرز موضوع حق الوصول للمعلومات في البحرين وعم نشهد في المنطقة العربية بعد جائحة كورونا في بداية العام 2020 اتجهت الكثير من الدول العربية ومنها البحرين إلى تعزيز قوانين مكافحة الجرائم الإلكترونية وبالتالي تقييد الحريات على الإنترنت والحجة بهذا الإطار هو مكافحة الأخبار الزائفة ومكافحة الأخبار الزائفة تتم ليس عبر قوانين والتشدد والاعتقالات و سجن الناشطين بل بتوعية إعلامية وتربية إعلامية وإنشاء مجتمع واعي, واعي قادر على مكافحة الأخبار الكاذبة أن وجدت والأصل, والأصل ليس التجريم بل التوعية كذلك تم, تم خلال فترة كورونا تضييق من خلال إصدار بعض الدول العربية لقوانين لملاحقة الناشطين على الإنترنت في مصر في, في الجزائر في تونس عملوا ضجة بهذا الإطار وحاولوا أنه يوقفوا هذا القانون اللي هو مكافحة الأخبار الكاذبة في الأردن هناك قانون مفعل من عام 2015 ويتم التجديد واستخدامه بشكل عنيف وبالتالي هناك مطالبات مثل ما قلنا بموضوع تعزيز 
حق الوصول للمعلومات الافراج عن عن سجناء الراي والصحفيين موضوع مهم ومهم جدا وهو منع الافلات من العقاب المحاسبه للجرائم المرتكبه بحق الصحفيين ما يتم في العالم العربي هو التغاضي عن هذه الجرائم المرتكبه وبالتالي يزيد الفاعلين والمرتكبين ضد الصحفيين يزيدون قوه في 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 مقابل الحكومات تقوم بالتغاضي عن هذا الامر ولذلك النظرة العامة للمنطقة العربية هي نظرة سيئة جدا في تراجع مستمر إذا ما تحققت هذه المطالب نحن إلى تراجع سواء في البحرين أو في مناطق أخرى من العالم العربي وشكرا لكم شكرا على إتاحة الفرصة Thank you so much Thank you أحسين نفس المطالب يعني اللي بتطالب فيها ال المنظمات اجمالا هي نفسها ذاتها انه the release of all journalists and the uh, uh, not to restrict the right to access information انا عم حاول شوي ترجم uh, بلكي لانه السبيكرز كانوا متوقعين انه تحكي بالانجلش فكان ابرزهم اللي انت حكيت عنهم وثاني وحده انه to abolish criminalizing false news وآخر شيء إنه to hold those accountable for the violations, uh, those responsible for the violations to hold them accountable. Thank you so much, Hassan. Uh, let's now get back to Fatma. Fatma, are you ready? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Perfect. So uh, thanks again for um, having me today and for this precious invitation. Um, uh, many things are already um, uh, to, uh, said by uh, the other speakers. I want to, um, to speak about the revolution silenced by media uh, and talk about media coverage. Uh, in the last 10 years, the Arab world has seen revolutions, but one has been repressed on the ground and in the media. The media, when it comes to assess the media coverage, of uh, the events that took place in Bahrain, we should first point out that there was a real blackout on the uprising in Bahrain. The news blackout uh, uh, it's, uh, in, uh, that in, in Bahrain, we can, uh, uh, we, can, we can recall some points that Bahraini governments uh, attempt to impose a news blackout on the ongoing demonstrations and the police crackdown, closure of opposition media, forced resignation of senior media personnel, harassment of local journalists and foreign TV crews, intimidation of Bahrainis who talk to foreign journalists, arrest of bloggers. The authorities are resorting to all possible means to limit coverage of the protest and to smear their organizers and participants. Closure of El Wasat in opposition newspaper. Um, access to its online version was also blocked. The day before, the national television program Media Watch had accused Al Wasat of trying to harm Bahrain stability and security and of disseminating false information that undermined the country's international image and reputation. The military prosecutor general used a, a decree on 28 March decision number five on 2011, and in which the publication of any information about ongoing investigations by military prosecutors was banned on national security grounds. CNN journalists Scott Bronstein and Terence Kixel were briefly detained on 29 March while interviewing Nabil Rajab. Um, I want also, I would like to show, to show uh, you a real example of this uh, blackout by a small monitoring on Bahrain in the Algerian press in August 2012. This observation concerns three titles of the Algerian press place from July 20 to August 5. 2012. This observation allowed to see how these three newspapers treat the events that the, the countries formed by the Arab Spring are experiencing 
and the difference in treatment according to the different countries. Indeed, the observation shows that these three newspapers get most of their information from dispatches of international agencies and news from major television channels. These sources are sometimes influenced by the political decisions of Gulf regimes and Western powers that do not seem to view certain protest movements favorably. The treatment of the treatment of these events in the three observed title is their minimum. El Khabar, for example, the news this newspaper devotes only 1.32 percent of its coverage to the events shaking Sudan and Bahrain. Uh, the articles written about Syria are all based on the dispatches of international agencies. Why the existence of a permanent correspondent of this newspaper in Cairo allows it to cover a large part of the Egyptian news, for example. This newspaper has published an article in Bahrain. It does not, however, twist the neck to the blackout imposed by international media to the revolution in this small Gulf country. Uh, El Watan, the second newspaper, uh, in this newspaper, the blackout is total on the protest movement in Bahrain. This would be justified by the boycott of Al Jazeera, Al Arabiya, and international agencies on, on Bahrain. The third uh, newspaper, Le Soir d'Algérie, here again, no article on the opposition movement that has been shaking Bahrain for more than a year. Uh, and uh, that's why we, we can talk about the quality of the media coverage, bias and inaccurate media coverage. The media has not given suf sufficient and extensive coverage to the events that have taken place in Bahrain in recent years. Although some reports have been made by foreign media such as Reuters, the Financial Times, the BBC and The Economist, compared to the attention that the media had given to events in Tunisia, in Egypt, and Libya in, in the same period, uh, at, uh, uh, the last 10 years. The coverage devoted to Bahrain remain insignificant. The media coverage is often characterized by two aspects. Media coverage focused on the events as part of sectarian conflict between Shahid and Sunni, rather than on the real reasons for this uh, event, such as the aspiration for freedom of expression, democracy, and living in dignity. Media coverage of the events by the national media often links the violence and riots that took place in Bahrain to foreign interference from countries such as Iran, Syria, and Britain. And uh, when we arrive to quantity, to the quantity of the coverage, the amount of media coverage, human rights organization are much more interested in Bahrain than the media. Um, that's the, the, that's uh, when if we, 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 we do a simple Google search on what is happening or what has happened in recent years in Bahrain, shows that most of the information comes from human rights and freedom of expression organizations such as Amnesty, uh, HRW, IFEX, or, and other organizations, while media coverage is, is still very, very uh, low. Thank you, and um, uh, I was honored to be with you today. Thank you, Fatma. Uh, Exactly as you said, uh, the limit of the uh, quantity of the media coverage and uh, quality, sorry, is uh, related to the lack of uh, independent media in Bahrain. That's uh, whatever was the violation, whether it was judicial procedures or uh, or uh, referrals to the public prosecutions, arrest, uh, uh, and uh, other forms of violations, uh, we need an independent media in Bahrain. Uh, I would like now to uh, uh, give the speech to Naziha Saeed. She wants to add something. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I have like few points to add. I will not take much. It's okay. I, I just wanted to, to point that um, 
you know how countries are are perceived uh, or or the word country al uh, perceived in, in, in our our countries uh, it's actually when you say al it means the government or the rulers so uh, one of the newspapers stated yesterday in the in the word press freedom day that uh, they are uh, freedom of press sticking to the benefit of the country so they are actually stating that their freedom of press limit and uh, uh, it's actually what the government and what the country wants them to to cover and and this is the, their freedom of press ceiling also i wanted to highlight the work of the general department for combating Co corruption and economic and elect uh, electronic security that become the freedom of expression catcher the department monitor all social media and summoning normal people, just any any person who are uh, stating any opinion on social media that doesn't go with the authorities' opinion. So it's the new weapon that that have been used because the the, the press is already silenced, and also uh, how to silence the people? Uh, they are silencing them through this department by uh, actually uh, investigating and uh, interrogating anybody who's uh, stating any. Um, opinion that doesn't go with the authorities' opinion. Uh, the press that exists in the country with a blessing from the authorities doesn't hesitate to spread hate speech against opposition, migrant workers, women, and other minorities. There are no laws preventing this kind of speech led by senior journalists or major media outlets. These are the points that I wanted to highlight and I forgot in my previous intervention. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Naziha. Thank you. So uh, in a nutshell, we can say that the press freedom is the most important embodiment of the freedom of expression. And a, a free press is not a luxury that can wait for better times. Rather, it is a part of the very process which bring about better times. Therefore, uh, we must not forget to call on the authorities around the world and specifically in Bahrain for abolishing the principle of criminalizing opinion and for releasing all arbitrary imprisoned journalists and investigate all instances of abuse. We are very pleased with the presentations everyone made today. Thank you all. It was a pleasure working with you. Uh, I'm closing this meeting now. Stay healthy until our next cooperation. Goodbye. Okay, well, thanks everyone. Thanks for taking part. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank nice you. To meet you.